Hey guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on today. I'm David Tisch. I run a fund in New York called Box Group. We're early stage investors in about 100 uh, early stage technology companies throughout the country, uh, focused on a lot of consumer tech, um, but also sort of holistic platforms that really try to uh, evolve an industry that is uh, slanting more towards the consumerization. And uh, I followed what you guys are doing and I'm fascinated to learn more. So nice to meet you. Pleasure meeting you as well. My name is Mart Izzeri. And my name is Yuri Molina. Where, uh, where are you guys at in terms of traction right now? So the, the prototype has been built, it's been out for a while, and we just talk through your traction for me? Absolutely. So currently we have two live pilots at one of the two most prestigious hospitals in the country, Northwestern Memorial Hospital and Rush University, University Medical Center. Um, and we already have results from the, from the Northwestern site. We've actually had a chance to increase hand hygiene gel consumption by 64%, uh, which is a very, very exciting number. We presented that at a large conference last month and was very, very well received from hospitals all across the country. So currently we're putting in the final design changes that basically make us ready for mass manufacturing and we'll be uh, distributing our product uh, nationwide starting January 1st, 2014. January 1st. And from a manufacturing standpoint, you guys have figured that whole piece out and that's not going to be a challenge for what you're doing. It's, it's the distribution and the sales that are going to be a, a harder piece of the business. Is that right? That's, a, that's absolutely correct, and I think that's the case with, with most healthcare companies is that the space is so fragmented and fractured. You know, there's some integrated systems, but many independent players. Uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, up to now, we've been, fo you know, it's low volume manufacturing is where we've been up to now. We're now making that, there's design changes that Mert mentioned to basically move into a must. So right now we're a couple hundred devices, what we've been producing. We're scaling up to be able to produce in the order of tens of thousands and millions of cartridges um, in any given, you know, a month or, or year period. Um, to really be able to meet that demand. So we've, in terms of traction, we've got about, you know, uh, a couple dozen hospitals that we're currently in conversations with setting up pilots to basically kick off as soon as our manufacturing and supply chain are ready. Um, but exactly right, in the future, over the next year, our big challenge is going to be uh, distribution. How do we get Swipe Sense in this innovation? It's kind of that diffusion of innovation. You know, we've created technology that we think solves a problem. How do we get that into the space and, and actually make a dent in those 100,000 uh, lives lost due, due to infections? So what other, what other customer types have you talked to other than hospitals? And why did you settle on starting with hospitals? Because it seems like the, the longest sales cycle and in terms of just <laughs> uh, path to market. It, it, there's a lot of both legal, regulatory, um, and business risks for all the, the customers you're trying to sell to. And so um, why hospitals and why not figure out or, or is there not a lower hanging fruit for you? That's a great question, actually. There is a lower hanging fruit, and we're already going at it. So um, we're actually selling our technology to commercial kitchens as well, and we have pi paid pilots set up in place that basically use the same technology to monitor hand hygiene in a, in a kitchen setting. You're absolutely right. It's a much faster sales cycle, and it's providing us additional revenue while, we're ha while we have to spend a lot of time in the, in the rugged road of commercialization in the, in the healthcare space. And if you go back to, to Vivek's concerns from last time around, exposing the data here is actually a negative, not a positive for both the bosses and the employees, then figuring out non-regulated industries where that isn't a risk to put your technology. So, you know, it, commercial kitchens is a great idea. Um, I think, and you know, why not other angles in the medical world? So vet or zoos where it's animals instead of people at risk, where there's still a sort of contamination in a hand thing. And then there's, you know, why not even private doctor's offices where there's a, a less a less broader view at that organization and it's instead just a smaller business and so have you guys thought about that is there and there's probably more disposable income at a lot of those places as well yeah that's a that's a good question so to, to answer the question directly on why did we choose hospitals first um, you know, I think as entrepreneurs, we're very much motivated by the challenge that we're tackling. And while there, the challenge of infections definitely exists in doctor's offices and veterinary offices, even in commercial kitchens, um, the, the reality of the matter is the, the kind of um, the strength of the problem. You know, it's literally 100,000 people are losing their lives in the, it's in acute care hospitals. That's where kind of the, the major, major, major problem is. And as entrepreneurs, that's what motivates us. Um, so that's, we kind how, of tackled that big you, problem. How long have you been doing this? Uh, for the past year and a half, almost it's getting almost to two, two years. years. Full time. That's right. Yeah, nice. So, and how much money have you guys raised? 
We raised $1.2 million. How much money do you think it's going to cost to make your company work? So to, to win this market, to get to scale, what, what's the number that you're going to need to raise to do that? To be frank, uh, our company has been performing better than our projections while we were fundraising. So there is a chance that we actually won't need another round of funding to actually take SwipeSense up to scale because of the potential partnerships in place that we have managed to, to, to secure. So we're currently in conversations with a lot of the alcohol gel manufacturers in the country where they make the hand sanitizer and distribute it into thousands of hospitals already, along with our lead investment from Blue Cross Blue Shield, one of the largest insurance companies on the in the country. Uh, let so, me phrase it um, let me phrase a question. Excuse me? How, awesome. Congratulations. That, that's fantastic. Um, so from a money standpoint, you're good. how long do you think from a time perspective it's going to take you to get scale in the hospital market? That's, that's a better question. So I think the reality of the matter is our sales cycle into a given hospital is between six and eight months optimistically from a first contact uh, to kind of a try it before you buy it to an, an analysis report ROI um, and then to the to negotiations contracting and actually implementation so given that that's the sales cycle for any single hospital to actually make you know any significant footprint in this market space to gain you know two five ten percent of the market it's definitely going to be a, a three five seven year halt if we're going to be the ones to, to do that all the way okay awesome so I, I totally agree and so you could either push that timeline up by raising money actually and scaling a sales force um, where you attack that market quicker or you could find alternative channels that aren't necessarily your mission critical goal right you're not you're not starting this company to go save zebras at zoos like that's not what we're here <laughs> for but if you can get an incredible amount of revenue from these alternative distribution channels that you can then use to increase your sales force at the hospitals, claiming the two at the same time might be the answer. So I would just push you guys to look at where other lower hanging fruit is that can get your revenue numbers up in addition to those partnerships that you have so you can scale at a more rapid pace than the long haul that, that I think is awesome that you're signing up for. And I think you you do this for five years, you grind it out, you get into the hospitals you need to get to. If the product that you built works and is right and the data is, is helpful, you guys are going to win. But if you can figure out how to do something in the short term where you're pushing revenue in order to grow the core, the core value of what you're building, I think it's worth exploring. What else is on your mind? You know, within the past year, in your experience as an investor, have things changed regarding hardware startups or, or you know, specifically technologies in, in, in healthcare? Uh, have you seen any trends moving towards um, companies that you have considered investing in, companies that, that you have invested in? What are the trends that, that you're seeing? And is it, is it upwards? Is it downwards? What are your thoughts? I mean, I think, I think hardware is here, right? I think that's fully established. And I think you guys were, you know, probably towards the earlier side of the establishment of that. I think you were, you were at the right time. And, Starting this two years ago is, is uh, you know, nice timing on your part. I think uh, in more and more investors are opening themselves up to hardware startups. Uh, we're terrible at healthcare. We, uh, you know, we don't know it. It's not our core competency. And so I think when we look at a healthcare company, we see the consumer side of it more than the healthcare side of it. Um, and so navigating hospitals sounds daunting to me. And so if I can figure <laughs> out, it's just right. I, I give you guys a lot of credit. Uh, but I, I think it's a it's a daunting task. And so for me, it's figuring out where's that sort of wider, less walled garden, lower hanging fruit that you can use in order to buy. You know, what I like to think is that you need to buy permission to take the next step in your company a lot of the time. And sometimes that's with a certain amount of money. Sometimes it's with traction. Sometimes that's with partnerships. And so I think if you guys can sort of buy permission to take the amount of time you're going to take through revenue generation, I think that that's a valuable thing because it might take you five years to knock all these hospitals uh, out and, and really get them to engage, use your product, get the feedback loop going. And in doing so, if you can service another industry to fund it, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. So congratulations on all your progress. I think you guys have a beautiful product. The, the software looks beautiful. The hardware is, is definitely consumer grade. Um, and uh, I wish you guys a lot of luck and thanks for taking the time. And, and, and good luck with Thank you concept. so much, David, for, for giving us your time and advice. Yeah, we enjoyed the conversation.